All right, my goal in this video is to convince you guys that eigenvectors and eigenvalues are not as bad as people make them out to be. So let's consider the matrix equation to motivate this topic. So you guys have seen this a million times before. Originally, we thought of this as a different way to represent a system of equations, and then we thought of this as a way to represent a linear transformation where you can input the vector x, and then the matrix A transforms the vector x into the vector B. Um, and we're going to use this again to talk about eigenvectors and eigenvalues because think about two possibilities for this linear transformation. One possibility is you input the vector x and then it gets transformed into some vector b like this, right? But then consider, say coincidentally when you input the vector x, the output is just a scalar multiple of x. Right, so this is x and this is b, but in this coincidental uh, thing, in this coincidence, b is just some scalar multiple of x. Well, if that's the case, then you can say x, your input, is an eigenvector of the matrix A. And then what's the eigenvalue mean? It's just how much it gets scaled in the, in the linear transformation, so it would be c. So let's rewrite this matrix equation, ax equals b. In the case where x is an eigenvector, meaning a matrix that when it gets transformed by a it just becomes a scalar multiple of itself. So when x is an eigenvector, a times x equals c times x. And then to use the, the notation that your book probably uses or the lecture slides use, you would say a times v, right? They call the eigenvectors v instead. a times v equals, instead of this, a scalar being represented by c, they represent it with the Greek letter lambda. So this is, this is critical. A times V equals lambda times V. That's the definition of an eigenvector. The eigenvector V, so let's be clear. You're going to be given some matrix, and the problem will probably say, find the eigenvectors of the matrix. So matrices have eigenvectors that correspond to it. So you call this vector V an eigenvector of A. So I'm going to label this V an eigenvector of the matrix A. And then... Uh, Lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue. So you can say the eigenvalue corresponding to eigenvector V. Right, because that should make sense. Every eigenvector has a corresponding eigenvalue. They come linked together, they're pairs. You input this vector, and then it just so happens that when you multiply it by a, it gets scaled by some number instead of like being rotated off its span a little bit. So when it gets scaled, a natural question to ask is how much does it get scaled by? Well, that scaling factor is the corresponding eigenvalue to the eigenvector x or v or whatever you call it. So this is really important. So this is like the, the canonical image I want you to have in your head when you think eigenvectors, eigenvalues. a times v equals lambda times v. And then the question is, well, how do you actually solve for this stuff? So conceptually, you're like, okay, I get it, Max. That makes sense. But then how do you actually solve for it? Well, we're going to do a concrete example in the next video, but let me just get to a form that you probably would recognize in your lecture slides. If I, uh, if I want to, here, just, uh, just bear with me for a second. Let's subtract from both sides lambda times v. Okay, so I have this equation, av equals lambda v, and I'm going to subtract lambda v from both sides. So what do I get? I get a times v <clears throat> minus lambda times v equals uh, the zero vector, right? <clears throat> so then what if I factor out v? Can I do that? a minus lambda, if you remember from the matrix algebra video, you have to factor this out on the right side because the order in which you multiply matrices matters. So I get this form, but wait a second. Here in the parentheses, we have a matrix minus, remember lambda is just a scalar. So that's not defined, right? You can't do a matrix minus a scalar. If you're gonna subtract matrices together, they have to have the same dimensions. So this is not defined, this doesn't work. So let's go back to here and let's multiply both sides by the n by n identity matrix. <coughs> So if I do that, if I multiply the left-hand side by the identity matrix and I multiply it through, i times a doesn't change, but then we get um, lambda times i. So on the left side, we get av minus lambda i, 
is going to be the n by n identity matrix times v equals, and I have to multiply the right-hand side by the identity matrix 2, but the identity matrix times the zero vector is just the zero vector still. The reason I did this is because now when I factor out v, a minus lambda i n times v equals 0, when I factor out the v now, now this is a matrix minus a matrix, so this is going to be defined, right? And then, oh god, this is so important. This here, when you simplify the, the terms, is just another matrix, right? And so if I just call this other matrix M, for example, look what we have. We have M times V equals the zero vector. That's the homogeneous equation. And if you notice, this V here is the same exact V up here in the definition of an eigenvector. So this is so important. The, the vectors that satisfy this equation are in the null space of M, right? Because this is the homogeneous equation. So the, the vectors in the null space of M, which is just A minus lambda I N, are the eigenvectors of A. And so if that doesn't make sense to you immediately, then, then just like copy this down and think about it. So <laughs> the vectors in the null space of M. Let me write it out. The null space of M are eigenvectors of A. Okay, so that's what we're going to use to solve it because we know how to find the vectors in the null space of some matrix, right? We've done that a million times. And so if we just we're given A and it says find the eigenvectors of it, find the eigenvalues. Well, we don't know how to do that by this equation, but we can manipulate it algebraically like we have, and we get A minus something else times V equals zero, and that's the homogeneous equation. We know how to find the solutions V to that homogeneous equation, and those V are the same exact Vs up here. So those Vs are the eigenvectors. So the, the vectors here that are in the null space of M, right, the vectors that satisfy M V equals zero, are the eigenvectors of A. And so in the next video, we're going to go over an example of that and actually compute it.